Silent Hill 2 is a third-person psychological horror game for PlayStation 2, Xbox, and PC that follows James Sunderland, who arrives in Silent Hill after receiving a letter from his deceased wife, Mary. Mary, could you really be in this town? Atmosphere. The atmosphere of Silent Hill 2 is really unforgettable. There's a murky haze to the place. Daytime in the town feels like a sad and melancholic dream, with its iconic soundtrack and intense fog making you feel like you've lost in a past you've never had. There's a loneliness to the game. The abandoned streets of the city don't feel empty because everyone has left, but feel empty because it seems no one was ever meant to be here to begin with. A lot of the game has this piercing, eerie silence that feels uncomfortable, like you're being left alone with dangerous thoughts or trespassing somewhere strictly forbidden. The long opening walking section builds this feeling of dread in the same way that its dark and quiet corridors do. There's something going on and you don't know what it is. But the thing that makes the game's atmosphere so unique is the sadness and delusion that surrounds James Sunderland himself from the way he does or doesn't react to things, and the way other characters react to him. So many of the cutscenes have this awkward feeling of troubled people trying to overcome their differences without understanding what each of them is really dealing with, and the pervading feeling that this is going somewhere, that James himself is harbouring the worst secret of all, and finding Mary is a constantly changing and unreachable goal for a reason. As the game progresses, you seem to dive off into the deep end, into impossible industrial areas or nightmarish landscapes of torturous designs, with rooms that make no logical sense, with James diving deeper and deeper into what feels like the corners of his mind that he'd rather not visit. The whole game resonates this vibe that what you're doing is something you shouldn't, that the events unfolding around you are the results of someone else's nightmares coming to life, and I personally felt bad for witnessing it. Unlike the first game, Silent Hill 2 is sad and haunting. It's more personal. Its strange moments feel like they have a greater meaning to them, and the most confounding thing is that everyone else makes it seem like the things that James is seeing just aren't there for them. Silent Hill 2 is disturbing. Its darkest moments are violating thoughts that come up now and then to the dreamlike surface level that is the foggy town. That's one Harry Mason. The biggest change is the enemy designs, with lots of unnatural and bewildering enemies that often give you reason to stop and wonder what you're looking at. There is a repulsion to them that was missing from the enemies in the first game, from the lying figure that looks like it's wrapped in plastic, to the monsters that hang from the ceiling in the hospital. There's a natural fear of what you don't understand, and the monsters are so weird and so inhuman, but with vague human traits, that they're just instantly repulsive. Even the way that they move seems to be unnatural from the lying figure coming out from underneath a car in a frantic, jittery crawl, to Pyramid Head with his first appearance being bathed in a red light at the end of a corridor, twitching at you menacingly. You don't even know what you're looking at half the time. The game is also fond of making you do things you aren't sure you want to do, pushing James's hand into a mysterious hole in a moth-strewn room, or asking him if he wants to jump into a seemingly bottomless pit to make you question your own sanity. 
In comparison to the first game, Silent Hill 2's bizarre elements are more subtle, from unnerving things like voices when you enter a room when it's clearly empty, to cryptic messages scrawled on a wall in blood. There was a hole here, but it's gone now. Its psychological horror elements mostly blend things together from the story to the sound design and atmosphere. It's not traditionally scary and its jump scares aren't anything special. Silent Hill 2 will still do things like place an enemy in a narrow room with you walking right into them as you load in, but its scares come more from its ability to abstract, its way of feeling wrong. It achieves being unsettling and frightening in this way more than it does from encounters with Pyramid Head or being locked in a room with horrific creatures. That's two Harry Masons. Sound Design the game's sound design is one of its strongest points, with an incredible soundtrack that complements every moment from the dreamlike interactions with Angela, featuring uncertain sounding strings with a beautifully sad piano playing over it that almost chimes thanks to the reverb, to the darker and more metallic combat music that enhances fighting these horrific creatures with scissor-like slashing noises and thunderous drums. It's more introspective in places with far more sombre and melancholic pieces to flesh out the game. So many tracks are used to briefly fill the gap between one feeling and another, with tracks like A World of Madness only playing in mere seconds it takes to find your way out of the graveyard. There's so many iconic tracks with haunting and beautifully sad vibes that it makes a soundtrack phenomenal on its own. The sound effects manage to sound creepy with even the basic door rattling having an eerie feel to it. Some sound effects are unforgettable like the iconic start game noise that sounds like the captured feeling of no return, so even the basic menu noise is just having a haunting feeling to them. Excuse me, I... <gasps> oh, I, I'm sorry, I... I no, was it's just... okay. I didn't mean to scare you. I'm kind of lost. Lost? The voice acting is awkward because the people themselves are awkward. It feels off and the way they talk to each other reveals them as a broken people they are. The conversations are difficult and the voice acting does an excellent job of conveying it. There's enough reverb on things to make everything feel spacious when it needs to be, but cramped with the reverb being very stunted and empty in the tight corridors of Brookhaven Hospital or the prison. The directional audio works fine, and that's all there is to it. The sound design is frankly incredible. It does a good job of being weird, but evoking familiar feelings as well as alien ones. It's creepy, nasty, invasive, and it works oh so well with the game. That's three Harry Masons. Shooting creatures generates a dark red blood cloud as they fall to the ground, and more blood pools underneath them. There's lots of things written in blood in an unsettling way, from the aforementioned cryptic messages to codes and other things smeared onto surfaces. There's only a few bodies in the game, with the most memorable one being covered in a grimy black gunk, and yet more dark blood, like it was attacked and killed by something horrible. The gore isn't a focus of the game, and it rarely gets in the way or oversteps its boundaries, but it's there when it needs to be. That's for Harry Masons. Story The story begins with James Sunderland receiving a letter from his deceased wife Mary, beckoning him to their special place in Silent Hill. James, on some level understanding that there's no way that she's going to be there, psychs himself up in a mirror before stepping out into the lonely, foggy town. The game's story is immensely sad, with its themes of guilt and persecution become overbearing as time goes on, with so much foreshadowing that still manages to obscure itself from some players. Its symbolism in the enemy designs to represent different parts of James's psyche is impressive and howering to this day. 
The different characters' plot lines overlap each other, and when they meet, there's always a feeling that one of them is exposing their secrets and desires. From the suicidal tendencies and trauma of Angela Orozco, the spyful and shameful Eddie, and of course, James himself, who often comes across as the most desperate, somehow, of all the characters in the game. He's unreliable with the things that he says, alluding to a darker reason for his sadness. The town punishes them all, and as the game gets closer to its conclusion, it feels like you just can't help anyone, not even yourself, escape from the things that haunt them. The story has several plot twists and works in a lot of unique ways, from its multiple endings to the clever way it determines which one you get, keeping track of subtle choices you make when you play, and each ending is satisfying and heartbreaking in its own way. Everything in the game seems to have a deliberate reason to be there. It's all working towards something and it makes so much of the game feel impactful. The story is one of the best in video game history. Making the final score, 5 out of 5 Harry Masons. Silent Hill 2 really stands atop of many people's horror game top 10s, not because it's utterly terrifying, but because it does a lot of things extremely well. It creates an atmosphere like no other, has grimy visuals like no other, its story and sound design are refined and impactful and it gets under your skin like nothing else. The reason we still talk about it all these years later is because it's unmatched. I hope you enjoyed this year's Halloween event. I put an ungodly amount of work into it ever since last year, and I'll be taking a long break after it's done. I'd like to point out that there will always be more horror reviews in the pipeline, and thanks for watching. And always go check out Bumps in the middle of the night. Peace.